Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner, and today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin. Is this really the beginning of the end? All right, let's find out. Yeah, right? it's the same thing with the dollar. The dollar is that value tie to the ecosystem, right? If all of a sudden confidence in that is diminished, what do you think happens to the rest of the world? Right. Right. But if if the confidence in the dollar is diminished, you. Th- the, the 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 flow of confidence has to go somewhere, right? It's gonna go to like metals or digital yeah. currency. Hold on, are we recording? First of all, we're recording now. Yeah, <laughs> just making sure. Okay, <laughs> you're right, but I don't think it's an overnight like realization. It's like all of a sudden the world just understands. Like, okay, our traditional financial infrastructure just goes kaput overnight well maybe not overnight but like even if it takes a 10 years to happen it's still not gonna just like coinbase is like such a good marketing job as like, oh coin <laughs> coinbase is on twitter right it's like oh my god the dollar is collapsing guys there's wild inflation going on in the world right well I mean, it sucks that you have to pay a month's salary just to get a loaf of bread you yeah. know what the solution to this is buy bitcoin <laughs> you think that's gonna work <laughs> Well, no, definitely so, not. Dude. There's so many other factors that go into that in order for the realization. Like, you know, yeah, there's, there's escape assets out there, right? But that's not for the general population to even be concerned about because, like, they're worried about how am I going to get that loaf of bread? Well, you think know? about it. If it does take a loaf of uh, a month's salary to buy a loaf of bread, of it's course, over. It, it's over. But <laughs> But if the only way to actually spend a month's salary for a loaf of bread is by holding valuable assets, then that's what people are going to do. So Coinbase is just going to take off. (laughs) So Coinbase is our Lord and Savior, dude. (laughs) Fucking Coinbase, dude. Please, like, come through in, like, times of need. I I don't know, man, dude. But I agree. See, look, okay. Where are we in this, like, uh, discussion? Like, have we already talked about, like, um... okay, this is what's happening. Clearly, the market's going through some kind of like uh, uh, it's borderline capitulation, but really it's just like anxiety and fear, right? Yeah, that's what's happening in the market. Yeah, just look at the charts, dude. People are starting to feel a little anxious. Like, what's going on, dude? Why do we keep going down? <laughs> it seems like every other week, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the blue chip cryptos are just keep going lower and lower and lower. Right. See, but <laughs> but we have to have some perspective. It's going lower, like relatively lower, but like mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things, we haven't reached the uh, the local bottom of twenty nine thousand yet, right? Of course. If we well, do, if, if, if you go lower than that point, then then you got some like oh, this is terror, right? You got yeah. like an apocalyptic event at this point. Yeah, that, I this, I'm saying yeah. we we will never see anything below twenty thousand dollars ever again. Right. Yeah. If if we're approaching twenty thousand dollars, we got a serious problem. So at the end of the day, though, let's just like get this out of the way, just because like what we're doing, we could speculate on this, right? Because like we're in a position where like no matter what happens, if we go lower from here or up from here, it's not really going to hurt us that bad, right? But there's people out there. Sure. If it goes significantly lower than this, it can hurt you significantly, right? So it's important for you to kind of like grasp what's happening in the markets and, and position yourself to where like, you know, if we go significantly lower than this, it's not going to impact your life, you know, cause that's important, man. Like even if you're like a traditional equities trader, you can't be over leveraged in these spaces. Right. Cause there's just so much risk involved. We don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Right. We're just kind of like vomiting from the brain and like, <laughs> trying to digest what's happening right here yeah and come to our own conclusions but there's not so much risk right for uh, for you and me even though there is from like a macroeconomic perspective but like personally it doesn't hurt us that much because like we have like a, a cohesive goal in mind like we're thinking 10 20 30 years yeah. in the future yeah. right for sure you no know, we don't really give a fuck what's going on right now <laughs> <laughs> but if you are in that position dude yeah, just just be mindful of it and like don't overexpose yourself to like the craziness of what's going on in the markets, right? Because if you do, then sh- you're in for some serious hurt. Because yeah. I've lived through that, dude. I've I've overexposed myself in the past. Yeah, and it hurts. 
like whenever things go south, you know? So that's just like a, a prelude to what it is we're trying to like, you know, talk about here. Yeah. And, and what I'm showing now is, is the Willy Woo chart. And this orange line represents the average price that people bought Bitcoin. And so right yeah. now the average price, which doesn't tell you a whole lot of information, but it tells you about like, this is just another data point. And the average price right now is $24,000. So on average, people bought Bitcoin when it was 24 grand or yeah, about roughly. So what does that mean? We still have a little ways to go before we, we hit that average. And all of a sudden that's a different uh, point in like the psychological expectation yeah. of like where the price is going to go. Mm -hmm. So, and then this is the, what is it? The cumulative value days destroyed. This is historically chosen wow. the bottom of the cycle. And I mean, we've got even a longer ways to go before we hit that point. And that's at $13,000. Yeah. So this is why it's so important to like discuss what's happening today and like what's going to happen over the next several weeks, because we've lived through moments like the last time where it felt like we felt this kind of like sentiment was yeah. like during the COVID sell off. Right. Yeah, and right here at the time it, it feels eerily similar to what we're feeling today. Like it just feels like it's over. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But, but back then there was like a much more clear reasoning to it. Now it's like a much more, there's a lot of separate factors that add on to like why the market's bearish. Right. There's, there's a, the federal reserve positioning on like how the actual, you know, macro economic system for like, uh, for traditional finance, like they're pulling back much, have much more heavily than they have in the past. Mm -hmm. So like the, the, the traditional finance world is kind of like waiting for these signals right now that these signals are here. It's kind of like inspiring more of like a bearish sentiment. And then on top of that, there's a, uh, COVID's still running crazy out there. You've got war with like <laughs> Russia and Ukraine on the horizon. There's just so many like different events happening at once. It's spooking people, right? Mm -hmm. But my, my position is always, okay, yeah, there's fear in the market. You have to put your value somewhere. Where are you going to put it? And all this talk about 7% inflation and then in the future is going to be 10% inflation and all this. It's like, does it make mm -hmm. sense to put your assets in into the dollar? Like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Well, I guess if, if all the other assets are depreciating faster then yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't bet on it. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You would have been on what? Like uh, a reversal from here? No, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet that it's going to go that much lower. I mean, I, I think I would start considering that as a possibility if we go below twenty nine thousand. Yeah. But, but yeah, the reason to highlight this is just because like the sentiment we're feeling now and it's it's being felt across the board, eerily reminiscent of when it was in like a twenty eighteen COVID sell off cycle. 2018, 2019. Actually, it was twenty twenty. Yeah, twenty twenty COVID sell off. That was the buy opportunity of a lifetime, dude, yeah. in the crypto markets. It, all markets. You know, people were irrationally afraid. Well, at the time, it felt rational because, like, the, the information just wasn't, like, you know, well understood, mm -hmm. right? Like, the markets were panicking. And this is, like, the point of all these squiggly lines. All it is is a representation of, like, mass psychology. That's mm -hmm. all these lines represent, right? Confidence in the markets, whether or not people think we're going up or down. So like there's a, if there's enough excuse or reason for us to feel like the lines are going to go down, mm -hmm. people start to sell. So like these, these reasonings why people should start selling, they're piling on all together. Sure, sure. Right. But that's, a good that's point. how it feels today. But like two, like a year from now, we might look back just like we do right now. That was like an opportunity for you to like capitalize yeah. on that fear. Right. That's, and that's what I was going to say is that if you understand the value of Bitcoin and you know that mass inflation is happening all over the planet, it's happening mm -hmm. now to the United States, right? We've seen an extended version of inflation called runaway inflation in, in, in a lot of other countries. We know what that looks like. And then you take a look at the fundamentals of Bitcoin and it's clear Anyone selling Bitcoin right now, it wouldn't make any sense. Like, if you understand Bitcoin, it doesn't make sense to sell it right now. 
Yeah. And so this, to me, yeah. looks like a buying opportunity because I'll take your Bitcoin. Gee, you don't yeah, want I mean, it, I'll take it. If you tie in the historical precedence of Bitcoin to like the sentiment of today, you're right. It's a good bet to kind of like let this fear um, drag the market down to the point where like, you know, I'm a believer in the the Bitcoin the the mathematical models, the historical precedents, whatever it is, right? Like Satoshi envisioned like a, a good enough economic model to where like, you know, there's this rhythmic presence to it and it's going to go up no matter what based on like scarcity and demand, all these things, right? And like yeah. it's an opposition to what's going on in the macro sense. Like that's the whole point of Bitcoin, right? It's like it's in opposition to what's going on in the traditional finance world. It's a good, yeah. It's a good like, bet. It's a good marriage of like uh, happenings to like to try and capitalize on this is all. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I agree. <clears throat> um, and, and so I the the reason why we're talking about Bitcoin is because ultimately that is the signal for all of crypto, right? And but what's interesting is the three percent sell off happening in the S and P five hundred and the Nasdaq and all that represents two and a half trillion dollars of losses which is the value of all of crypto and yeah. and of course crypto is following uh the the trend right if if the mass psychology is to sell of course bitcoin is going to sell because it's the same people right so yeah i think this is an opportunity of course within reason don't don't sell your house now right this is the last. Yeah, this is the last thing you want to sell as a house for for uh, yeah. Bitcoin, but uh, but I mean, if you can stomach the craziness, I mean, I, I mean, I'm all in, dude. I know you're all in. <laughs> <laughs> you're definitely all in, and I I uh, appreciate that in you, dude. You don't you don't waver in your beliefs, no, but I, I do not. I got to present the other side of the coin, though, of like, uh, <laughs> these are unprecedented times, like from an economic perspective, right? And I've been saying this since like the beginning, since, since, probably since like the first time we recorded like uh, a podcast episode on this channel. You know, we've never really witnessed like how Bitcoin behaves in like a Goldilocks scenario, similar to how, you know, the 2008 market crash was right yeah. like his bitcoin was incepted after that event mm -hmm. so we never really witnessed how bitcoin responds and the crypto space as a whole to like a legitimate economic downfall mm -hmm. right and like if you look through history like the past 50 60 70 years these things tend to happen every like 10 years right yeah these like macroeconomic events mm -hmm. were like uh the traditional finance space just happens to like overstep their bounds and maybe like the federal reserve has some kind of like impact on that. I don't know. Yeah. But like, it, it's like cyclical, just like Bitcoin is cyclical, right? Like the traditional finance space is cyclical and like the space has been kind of waiting for the next downside event to happen. Right. Cause it's like, <laughs> it's been if like you look at the, 12 years. Yeah, go ahead. It's been 14 years since the last like dip. Well, actually if you don't count uh, the black swan event called, covid covid it's been yeah. like 14 years since the last big dip which is like a, uh extended. longer than usual yeah it's overextended right? so like there, there's like mass sentiment like everyone's kind of like waiting around like when are we gonna like actually accept a correction phase to the uh to the market mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so the federal reserve has a lot to play into that and like uh <sighs> there's just so many different components to it but the fear that we're experiencing now is definitely tied to that, right? Like this could be it. Yeah. We don't know clearly for sure. We don't know whether or not this is it or not, but <laughs> your understanding of that sentiment needs to be played into like how you participate in the markets today. Right. Yeah. Like and, and that's when, it. When that macro bubble pops, it's definitely going to bring down Bitcoin, but, but Bitcoin will have like a, like a natural bottom that it, it won't depress to like a value of zero just because money all of a sudden is, is recognized as something that's a, a, a like a Ponzi scheme. But mm -hmm. uh, so, so if you're going to have some value, you're not going to put that value in, in the dollar or anything else, because that is what, that's what 
that has the inherent like expectation of just the process of how money works, the whole uh, the fiat mon- monetary system is mm-hmm. self defeating, and so in the long term, it doesn't make sense to just hold dollars right for this like economic like d- catastrophe. So it yeah. makes more sense just to hold Bitcoin if if you're you're going to be running into that scenario. So well, yeah, that's what we hope would happen, right? I would speculate that that would be the right strategic move. Like I could be wrong, but uh, but I would speculate from the math. Like it's it's hard money, right? Bitcoin is hard value, and yeah, it has like this uh, psychological component to it which is humans that depress and in- increase the value of the of the token but ultimately there's nothing like bitcoin mm, there isn't well there's gold but it's well, not... i guess it's like bitcoin yeah it's like bitcoin but it's it's similar but not like bitcoin not in the modern age like uh it doesn't have the same transmissibility like bitcoin well, has more viral properties to it than gold does Right. That, well, yeah, therefore, it's for, much forget more... the digital aspects of Bitcoin and the fact that you can transact with it and everything. Forget that. The fact that there's only 21 million Bitcoin and then gold. You could you can mine gold on an asteroid, right? You could go to a different planet and find gold. Like technically, you can find more gold, right? It's not scarce. That's mm. the difference between the two. Yeah, it's very viable scarcity versus like a hypothetical. I guess. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, but but still, like uh, from a mass market standpoint, like you know, both are viable options, and I think gold has like the the advantage in the sense of like uh, the it's existing right. elites within like the financial sure. infrastructure, like they're, they're much more inclined to kind of like use that as a safe haven asset in the events of like you know a financial collapse. But clearly, like we're in the process of transitioning away from that, like you know moving to a more digital sense yeah. of that same, you know, I, uh, idealistic, uh, like a uh, store of value. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about that. We, we understand that. And like, that's the, the whole like thesis behind like why Bitcoin is valuable. Right. Cause like, uh, over time, the, the newer generations will kind of gravitate towards this like understanding of, uh, you know, a digital store value. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's why Bitcoin today is valued. I mean, now it doesn't, you know, <laughs> we say what, what's Bitcoin value? I'd say like 40, like 38,000 mm-hmm. for whatever reason, we feel like that's not a good sign <laughs> <laughs> today, yeah. but really yeah. that's insane considering yeah. like, you know, three or four years ago, we were like happy owning like three, $4,000 Bitcoin. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. And like at a forty thousand dollar Bitcoin, we're freaking out. You know, <laughs> that's it, dude. The markets are crazy, dude. Yeah, and we're witnessing it. And, and that's why we recorded this video because we feel the same sentiment. Everybody's feeling that. I was like, "Is this it? Are we? Are we about to hit even more like depressed value? It's like, should I yeah. sell? Like, we're feeling the exact same thing. But I always go back to the math of it." Like I would yeah. rather hold Bitcoin as it goes down than hold anything else. Mm, there you go. That's I think that's the takeaway. Yeah. Yeah. That's the main takeaway. Like if you truly believe in the Bitcoin concept and like the ideology behind, you know, digital the digital economy, like the future of like Bitcoin is the foundation of it all. Like whether you believe in NFTs, the metaverse, all this stuff, Bitcoin is the foundation to it all. Yes, it (laughs) is. If you believe in the future of like a digital economy, the digital existence, whatever you want to call it, the the renaissance of like the next stage of like human um, existence, then there's nothing to be worried about, right? That's it. I, this is this is like just drama. Think about it as that. Yeah, <laughs> like you're, you're tuning yeah, you into go. like the most exciting Netflix series of all time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's yeah. it. Oh, look at that! So this is the chart that we were talking about. It says uh, one hour ago by uh, Plan B. It says in 2016 I bought my first Bitcoin at 400 bucks. March 2019 I published stock to flow ratio. We started the podcast in February. We discovered Plan B like. Yeah. March time frame. 
We did. And and it was at four thousand dollars. Now January twenty uh twenty twenty two BTC dropped to forty forty grand within the second standard deviation band, right? We're in the light blue area. Yeah. Right, so let's let me zoom in onto this. We're in the yeah. light blue zone. This is like this is buy time if there ever was one, I man. I, I agree. Like historically again. <laughs> Based on the evidence, dude, it's rare that like uh, the Bitcoin trajectory like dips into these zones, dude. Very rarely. It might have happened three, four, five times in the past. Yeah. Every single time it did, that was the buy opportunity of a lifetime, dude. Not financial advice. That's just yeah. fact. Yeah. <laughs> Do with that knowledge whatever you feel, you know? Yeah. And then finally, it says some are worried about the current dip, but I'm quite sure that BTC will add another zero in the next couple of years. Embrace volatility. Um. Anyway, there was a uh, what I wanted to show was that there was a post here highlighting that Bitcoin right now is at an all time high in hash rate. Okay. Yeah. Let's so so that. what does that mean? So hash rate. That is the basically just a numeric de- depiction of how much computational resources are being directed at Bitcoin. So what does that okay. mean? It, it means there's a huge cost associated with it. There's a number of parties gearing up more hardware to protect the network, right? To to mine Bitcoin. This mm-hmm. is at an all time high. So mm-hmm. so there's never been a point in time where companies, server farms, miners who who have concentrated this amount of resources until now. This is the most it's ever been uh, in terms of hash rate. So. I mean, that should tell you something that they have confidence in Bitcoin, right? They're spending more money trying to mine Bitcoin at ever right now. Mm-hmm. Either that, or it's just like so much capitulation going on. It's like it's just, it's it's, it's uh, dragging the hash rate up beyond normalcy. It's just so much selling, right? Well, it's, it's not. It's no. I mean, selling and buying has nothing to do with the hash rate. It's the computational power to mine Bitcoin. And so there are more competitors competing to mine Bitcoin, and as a result, there's a higher hash rate. Okay, so, thank so, you for clarifying that so, because that's important. Yeah, yeah. So, so in other words, the mining industry has more mm-hmm. money invested into it right now than ever was before. Yeah. So in order for that to come to fruition, then the, yeah. Because there's a cost associated to that. So right, like exactly. people wouldn't put themselves in that kind of like financial position unless they like were expecting some type of return. Yes. That's it. Exactly. Right. It's, uh, yeah. As, as it's, soon as, as soon as it's expected to not be profitable to mine Bitcoin, well, what do they do? They turn off the machines and all of a sudden mm-hmm. hash rate goes down. Mm-hmm. And so now, now when you mine Bitcoin, then you can pay the bills. Then you're profitable. Then you just keep it going. And then all of a sudden, once the value of Bitcoin goes up, then you can turn on a few more machines and all of a sudden hash rate returns. Yep. Well, that's good. More indicators in like, uh, you know, just because like the prevalent market sentiment is like feels extremely bearish. You got to pay attention to all the data, right? All the vectors of uh, what's actually happening at the moment. And uh, yeah, man, we've been through this so many times, man, but it still feels like it feels new every time. If like that, it's so weird, the human psychology, how it plays into this. Yeah. You know, you might feel nothing, Will, but like the majority of us <laughs> feel something, <laughs> you know, um, like, like you've already made your, your mindset like uh, a three, probably three years ago. Yeah. No matter what happens in the markets, it's like you're. You're permeable, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, just because, I mean, I'm not a permeable just because I've just set my my sights on it, but I understand the math, and I understand that there's nothing like Bitcoin. And so, I mean, and just look at this chart here. This is the total hash rate in in terahashes for Bitcoin. We are literally right now at an all-time high, meaning there's never been more faith in Bitcoin than right now. Yep. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So nothing to fear. Nothing yeah, let to me, fear at all. Let me let me uh, create that anxiety again. And let's look at that. This this 
red candle. Yeah. And this is, I mean, okay. If you onboard it into the, like the crypto ecosystem, anywhere past like 2019, maybe 2020, this is totally new to you. Right. And there's a lot of you, a lot of people out there who probably never been exposed to this kind of like downside pressure. So this is like painful. Right. But this is, it's part of it, right? This is like part of the maturation process. You got to live through this in order to like uh, figure out like what's going on in the space. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's part of the maturity process. Like you're saying. It's like hazing. Like if you're going to join a fraternity, <laughs> you got to get hazed yeah. from time to time, you know? Yeah. And, and look at this uh, RSI. It's like, dude, buy time. Oh, <laughs> you know what? Did you say the same thing during the COVID sell-off? You might have said the same thing during the COVID sell-off. I remember when we first started the podcast, you were really into technical analysis. Yeah. And like that was like one of the first things you mentioned is like, dude, the RSI is like unbelievably bullish. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like this is the time to be buying. And you know what? That that's kind of like the premise we started the podcast off. It's like these are the buying times. So yeah, that's right. But dude, oh, once it sh- once it rips, dude. It's going to be the ripening. <laughs> the ripening. You heard it here first, dude. The <laughs> ripening has been called. Uh, all right, guys. I appreciate you I'm, guys. I'm, I'm excited for it. Yeah, man. We're going to see that $200,000 Bitcoin at some point. At some point, maybe. Should I should I say it? Maybe this year, dude. We're going to see mm. it this year. Watch. Well, you got like 12 months to work <laughs> with. So, yeah, you know what? That's a safe call, dude. <laughs> Uh, I'm with you, dude. All right, I'm bullish I, still too. If, There's just too much good shit to happen. If you're watching this in 2023 and I end up being wrong, then you can haze me in the chats <laughs> in the in the comment section. But if yeah, I'm go right, ahead, yeah, cancel I'm, us. Yeah, you know, go ahead. Yeah, comment. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's been our assessment of the market. Uh, it's it, it is scary. I'm not impervious to like these feelings, but. But if you understand like where what what Bitcoin is, I mean this is just part part of part of the ride. It is. That's the where all the fun comes from. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like I said earlier, if you're overexposed, don't do that. Definitely <laughs> you know, not. don't do what I'm that has like a legitimate like impact on your on your actual life, that's not okay. Yeah. That's it. It's as simple as that. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching, and uh, maybe in our next video, we're going to talk about this uh, this tweet that I found that they were talking about the metaverse, and uh, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be kind of funny, uh, kind of going through that. All right, guys, we will see you in the next video. Peace. <laughs>